Uh, we must commend Honorable Ablaka for uh, the diligent and very, um, let me say, detailed investigations. Yes, uh, it's commendable because, you see, what we are often lacking is, you know, uh, parliamentarians really holding government to account. And I see this particular investigation as one that is to be commended so that other MPs, of course, Kujutu Ablakwa didn't do it alone. He says the minority caucus, right, mm -hmm. had uh, were spearheading it, and he was detailed to do it, yeah, right? So we would love to see more. We would love to see more. So the key thing, apart from commending them, is that at least so far we've shown, all right, mm -hmm. or they have shown through the investigations that Kusi Boatin's company purportedly gave the National Cathedral a loan, right? Well, that, that's been established. The cathedral's own statement yes. actually yes. Co yes. corroborates that. No? Good. So, uh, so the point I'm making about it is that for the executive secretary to be given a loan at this time and in such circumstances, you see, mm -hmm. it's very curious. What we do is that it doesn't matter the final outcome. I always say that, you see, uh, in strengthening our democracy, sometimes the conversations alone have a very positive impact. The conversations, just like what we're doing here, have a positive impact because they deter like-minded people. So yes, you can go into the Shirad investigations and win, but certain things will never go away. We'll see that mm, there's something wrong, and there will always be that stigma that this is what you did. So that's the value that I'm talking about, the value of the stigma in trying to deter others. So I'm saying that it doesn't matter what will come out from Shraj. It doesn't, right? But so far, what will go on, even beyond Shraj, is that, oh, oh. so is this what Reverend Kusi Boatin did? You see, and that's what I'm saying that, so not the merits, not going into the merits of the case. Yes, as a lawyer, usually I want to stay away from the merits. So I'm just looking at the ones that he himself has accepted. Do you see it? Mm -hmm. That's all that I'm talking about. So that for the uh, conflict, the other things, yes, let Shirad go on, right? Uh -huh. But the unassailable facts, the uncontested facts, so you're like, ah, how? An account that was zero. That's what so far shows, right? Mm -hmm. And then government gives you such a sum of money. And the next thing, you are giving the cathedral project a loan. Obviously, in everybody's mind, this doesn't add up. It doesn't matter what is before Shiraj. These are separate things. It doesn't add up. It doesn't, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And so that is the message that as citizens we should watch. That, hey, in doing this, things, we should always watch that there would be others watching. Okay, people may be trailing us. People may be trying to investigate. People may be trying to dig so that we can stop the things that don't make our democracy a stronger one. Because in all of these conversations, the common theme is that we want to hold public officers accountable. Mm -hmm. We want to make citizens better. Because all too often we find our citizens and also as public officers, the conducts we exhibit are usually below par. It's uh, they don't move the nation forward. That's the whole team. That's the overarching team. They don't move the nation forward. And what we are all eager to do is to move this nation forward in every aspect of life. So you see that, and there is, so it's kind of um, become good riddance at a time when the cathedral project is come under so much attack, and rightfully so, because you see that it shows, especially with the government spending on the cathedral, it shows that the government has gotten its priorities wrong, extremely wrong, because at the time they went to the Supreme Court, you read the, the, the Supreme Court decision, they say, oh, I'm talking about the cathedral matter. Okay. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. which, which other Supreme Court matter? Oh, the one by Takuti suit. Uh, uh, that's a, uh, in the construction. Okay. As he did it. Yes. Oh, okay. Lawyer, okay. Yes. I haven't noticed that it's bright. Uh, uh, this, uh, so this is uh, Mayor Aglaze. Mm. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. So the lawyer was acquitted. All right. Great. Uh -huh. So you see that you read the Supreme Court judgment. They tell the Supreme Court that, oh, government is giving land. Government is giving land, right? Mm -hmm. And then, so far, 
Then you see that years on, government is pumping in money. Government is pumping in money. Then you see that, oh, so even the Supreme Court itself has been deceived. You don't do that. Please do full disclosure. If you intended to put in uh, uh, this in fiscal cash, and of course, I'm not belittling the money. You see that the land, the land alone, the value of the land is run into hundreds of uh, this, uh, millions of Ghana cities, right? Yes, because even one of the companies that's suing uh, for the demolition is suing for about 120 million Ghana. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's just one. Look at the judges' bungalows that were demolished, fresh bungalows. Some had barely been used. Then you look at the other areas at this time. You see, so this investigation has just come, that's why I'm calling it good radance. It's come to add force to the argument that government has gotten its priorities wrong with this cathedral. I think we are all Christians. Look, I'm a Catholic. Mm -hmm. So if you say you want to build a church, that's not a problem. But the point is that where and at what cost? At what cost? And I think Honorable Okujetu and uh, Sam George, uh, Honorable Dafia Meko, most of the MPs, they've come to make the point that why wouldn't you stretch it out over several, some of the cathedrals have been shown to have been built over several decades. So every year you should have a plan, but not rush like this, because so far I said we've put in over 200 million uh, Ghana cities of government funds. Is that not so? Yes. Yes. And so that is where the pain is coming from. So this investigation is good because it's kind of uh, fueled the conversation, still holding government to account, and uh, naming and shaming government that no, 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 we are not taking this. We are not taking this. Not at this time. Problem is build. It's as if the land is not sufficient. When we know that this land alone is costing hundreds of millions of Ghana cities, you see. Mm -hmm. So um, let Shiraj continue, but for us in the public uh, space, we've already taken lessons and we are sending uh, this, uh, uh, what do you call it, um, warnings to the people in charge of the cathedral that look, it's not too late. Sometimes we all make mistakes. You can cut back, you can look at the thing, go back to the drawing board, look at it and say, okay, yes, we've heard what the people are saying, so perhaps we want to make some changes. We will no longer take government funds. You see, just like what the MPs did admirably in the budget by resisting the use of the 80 million uh, or the earmark of 80 million uh, cities for the cathedral project, right? Mm -hmm. They fought it and then that had to be shifted from the budget, from the cathedral project to as a Ministry of uh, Roads and Transport, right? Mm -hmm. So we'll call on the uh, uh, the Board of Directors of the National Cathedral Project, they should listen. It's not that we are anti-Christ, so we need to know, but we are looking at the economic realities. Uh, God doesn't always have to dwell in big palatial buildings, no. He's in our hearts. How much of our hearts have we converted that we are busy looking for big, big buildings? If we had converted so much of our hearts, I'm sure Ghana would have been a far better place, far, far, far better place. But looks like we are interested in fiscal buildings and monuments and all those to say we are worshiping God. You know, we are deep down within our hearts. Mm -mm. We are far from God. Because if we really were, if we really were, this country wouldn't be here. This country wouldn't be here. You see it. So when you find citizens kicking against it, it's because of all the decades of the failed promises. So you look at it and you think, well, it's just a cathedral project. No, it's not. But it's an insult, so it appears, is a slap in the face of the Ghanaian that, oh, we give you power, Mr. President, and you're coming to give some personal, your personal promise to God. You're making it a national project. I mean, how? I think, but but w w which aspects of this whole petition, I mean, should be of interest to, to, to Shraj? I mean, Okuja Tua Blackwa is asking for specific detail. But this, as you indicated, goes beyond just the investigation. What would Shraj be interested in, um, in, in going on this part of the investigation about this particular cathedral and what some of the Black Horse petitions them about? Okay, so what he's saying is, as far as I understand, the conflict of interest part, right? So um, you take, you have made executive secretary of a National Cathedral Project, then you bring your company privately and say the company is lending money. 
to the National Cathedral Project. Now, what are the various, uh, what do you call it, procedures that have been gone through, right? The disclosures and all that. And especially you see the names, the differences in the names. The Eshen, you see the priest, the, uh, the, the reverend. It turns out that those are his, uh, his junior pastor, right? Mm -hmm. The company directors, blah, blah, blah. Uh -huh. So he begins to tell a certain story. Is that how you would conduct business? What, how did it come up that amongst all the companies in the world, straight away it was this company, his junior pastor's company. You see, they put the name in there, the di he and the wife, a junior pastor and the wife being directors of the company. How come of all the companies in the world, how is it that the National Cathedral put out a notice we want to, a company to lend us money on what basis? So you see that it's all not clear. And in fact, so, the third director of this uh, company is uh, the Kwabene Du Jenfi. He himself. The, the third uh, the identity mm -hmm. of the same person. Yeah. Perfect. So he about. uses his other name. So those are the things that the Shiraj will be looking at. Your, 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 so let's say your subordinate, your subordinate's wife, then you yourself. That's in the other uh, this, uh, uh, name, in the other identity. Mm -hmm. Why? Why such a thing? And you, you never know this. Is the more we dig, then the more other things will, will come out. And so that is seriously a matter that has to be investigated. Yes, it, it has. For it will strengthen our democracy, as I keep saying. At least you see the conversation it has generated. It has generated. So it's always like, okay, hey, 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 Ghanaians, let's be careful. Let's be careful. Let's be careful. Yes, because we need to keep preaching it. Because you see that, as I said earlier on, we don't seem to be changing. We seem to be reading the Bible every day. Look, even you go to some workplaces during working hours, people are reading Bible. We've been taught Bible from childhood to date. But still, I don't know. Sometimes I sit back and I'm like, ah, what kind of people are we? There's no attitude, no ah, transformation. Yes, we've <laughs> read the Bible. So look at the, uh, if the president, eh, starting mm -hmm. from him. I'm too old to steal your money. I, did this, this, this. I come in now here. I come in now here. Then you come. Then you put your brother as finance minister. Every city we borrow. Then your family becomes rich through data bank. Then I'm like, what? You see? So uh, this is uh, Alfred. And there's this interesting part. Uh, and it's very important because it's still coming to our ethics. That we had long thrown our ethics to the dogs. But we just keep deceiving ourselves. Because you see, yesterday night, somebody sent something here. And it ties in. Because if... Uh, I were the president, and by now you ask Reverend Kusi Boatin to step aside. He just has to go. No. But the president, as usual, mm -mm. he hasn't heard. Look, look at this. And it ties in because he's the one, like we say, a fish rots from his head. Look, I have how many? 18 uh, very notable quotes eh, from the president. Please, let's run through. Then you get a summation of. Uh, the National <laughs> Cathedral in Ghana. One, why, why, why I shall protect that? the public purse. Two, I'm too old to steal your money. I have okay. my money already. Oh. Three, yet it's a castle. Oh, my friend. Wait, let me just finish. Now, so exactly. <laughs> no, try me and see. Five, I'm not corrupt, and I will never be corrupt. When was the last time he could repeat that statement? Six, I can devolve Ghana without borrowing. The money is here. Seven, I will transform Ghana in 18 months. Eight, I will not separate if uh, I will not operate a family and friends government. Well, the jury is out there. <laughs> Nine, I will fight corruption with the Anas principle. Ten, I will make the Kole Log, uh, Lagoon and an Odor River a tourist site. Eleven, I will build a factory in every district. Twelve, I will give each constituency one million every year. Ah, well, we should find out today. Thirteen. I will arrest the dollar. Mm -hmm. Great. 14. <laughs> the hikes in fuel prices will be a thing of the past. Okay. 15. I will make Accra the cleanest city in Africa. 16. I will build 111 hospitals in 18 months. 17. I will build 350 secondary schools. 18. We will never go to the IMF for a bailout. So you see. Mm, well, lawyer, Martin Pebble, thank, thank you. you. Let me welcome Dennis Miracles Abwadi, the presidential staffer. Good morning. Good morning, Alfred.
Welcome. And Happy New Year to um, and, uh, yes. Laya Martin and then Honorable Roxy. I've been to Honorable Roxy's yeah. constituency. The thickness of the road is like this. You mean? <laughs> Why you lose it? You mean South Dyke? I'm telling you. <laughs> hey, the one is hard. The thickness is like this. It is, I think, the thickest asphalt in, in the country. No. And not the way in Apija. Oh, no, no. <laughs> but you know it. <laughs> I don't know it. They do. Happy New Year's Day. Yes, yes, yes. Anyway, mm. so while we are at it, yesterday, in fact, uh, Samuel Okuja Tua Blackwa tweeted this that on 13th of August 2013, when v Victor Kosi Boating, also known as Kobuna Edu Jenfi, was advised to use, allegedly, was advised to use his mother's name following the demise of his father. On the 13th of August 2013, he filled a tax payer registration form at the Ghana Revenue Authority under the name Victor Kusibuating with a date of birth September 7, 1971. He declared that his mother's maiden last name is Ata Agnes. Take note of that. Subsequently, he was given a tax identification number for his Victor Kusibuating name of P000250. 2682. On the 24th of March 2016, that's the second date, he returned to the Ghana Revenue Authority this time with the name Kwabana Edu Jemfi and a date of birth December 30, 1969. Remember, the earlier date of birth was September 7, 1971. He declared the biological mother with the maiden name of Jemfua Ya as against the previous one of Agnes Atta then giving a second tax identification number for the Kobane Dujenfi name. This specifically details some tax identification numbers that the GRA has not come to dispute as yet. And this is Samuel Okuja Tua Blackwell's latest release on this unfolding saga. Then it's, I'm sure with all of this, that has been petitioned, Shraj has been petitioned on it for anybody who demands clarity <coughs> and accountability. should be of concern to all of us. Yeah. Alfred, um, I think this is my first time this year on TV3. So I say a very warm, happy new year to, to all our viewers. I, 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 I hold a view that Honorable Okujuta Blackwa remains the most dramatic politician in this country with a lot of theatrics. Um, I would not be able to impugn any uh, bad, you know, uh, mindset with whatever it is that he does. What I think is too dramatic. And he injures a lot of people, either knowingly or knowingly, um, before the facts. And I think that, that it is unfair. If you are doing it to Miracles, Honorable uh, Dafia Mopo, who our politicians are in the front line. That's fine. We could easily interpret it as you trying to, you know, gain political advantage and all. But it's as if we are trying to drag almost every person in this country under the bus at one point or the other and to just, you know, um, satisfy whatever agenda that, that we have. Alfred, I, I have met other, uh, Reverend Kusibuati just once in my life. I went to the cathedral secretariat to, with some friends to, to contribute. The friends wanted to make a contribution, so I, I led them there. That was the first time I ever met him. I don't know him. I have never met him anywhere. I don't attend his church. And so I do not hold breath for him, neither do I speak for him. But I am only looking at the facts and the issues as, as, as a stick and trying to ask myself a lot of questions with respect to what it is that we politicians are attempting to do to ourselves, which we are now trying to move it to innocent citizens who also um, try to contribute to contribute their quota. If I read Honorable Okujito's statement, and I don't want to, I don't want to divert, because consistently that is what I mean by the drama and the theatrics. He would come up with an issue, accuse people, 
start from a certain tandem or tangent or whatever it is. Then along the line, as he's, you know, uh, proving one after the other that it's either he's um, go getting into hasty conclusions, which is a lot of fallacy, or he's wrong, then he will be jumping. So you, you catch him here, then he jumps to the next one. You catch him here, then he jumps to the next one. So you make a post. And then you say that, and I'll read a few, a few bits. Painstaking and diligent. So the drama starts. Painstaking and diligent parliamentary oversight with gracious guidance of the omniscient or omnipotent has led to what can only be akin to the char bomba or Bombay findings. And he says, blatant corruption. That's the first key word. That's his first allegation. Blatant corruption, conflict of interest, self-dealing, and grand fraud. This is his allegation on the issue of DNS. And before, before then, after then, um, Reverend Kosi Boateng. Blatant corruption, conflict of interest, self-dealing, and grand fraud. I'm, I'm just quoting him. Then he goes on to say that he has actually unveiled that the National Cathedral has made an illegal payment to a company called GNS, which for me, I think was a very good work done by Honorable Ablak Okudyotoko. Okay, that's his job. So if I receive a report, and, and I saw Honorable Ida Femme Report with it, I see a report and I identify a line which I am not aware of or nobody is aware of. I have every right to ask and question. So there's nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with that. But then the theatrics start. I'm a member of parliament. I have identified that the cathedral has made some 2.6 million to a company that we've never heard of before. I don't jump to Facebook to call people corrupt, to impugn self-dealing, to impugn fraud without actually getting to know the fact. So in fact, for almost a whole day, the conversation in the country was that the National Cathedral has made some illegal payment to a company called GNS, which of course was going to be corruption, which was fraud, was fraud and all of that. Until later on in the day, later on in the evening, GNS or wherever it came from released their bank statement. And the object behind the releasing of the bank statement was for them to establish the fact that there was a debit and a credit. So their statement showed that your 2.6 million didn't just come from nowhere into our account. There is evidence in our bank statement showing that we moved some 2.6 million from our account to the National Cathedral. And then at a later date, the National Cathedral paid back the 2.6 million. In fact, that so, statement from the National Cathedral Secretariat will put that on the screen uh, while you yeah, talk. But, but, it's, almost, but it's almost the same thing that I'm, I'm saying. Yes. So, 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 the, so that transaction, that confusion, more or less, was immediately responded to by GNS. Fair enough. Then, you're a member of parliament, so you still want to understand how these things are going. And the National Cathedral came to corroborate the, the point that the GNS bank statement sought to make, which was clear that it was a decision of the trustees of the board. For that as, the secretary to, of, of, the, of, the, of the National Cathedral Board of Trustees to loan money. Hold on, hold on. You see, so let's, so let's take it one by one. Then I, I, want to build, I want to build my points. So I don't want to lose a thought. I want to follow what is done. Because the jumping is what confuses everybody. So I want, to, I want to build a point. So first of all, it was established that it was a complete life falsehood to try to impugn fraud or illegal payments by the statement. Okay? And the secretariat came to prove that indeed, it is not as if some company sitting somewhere that has rendered no service to the cathedral has been paid some 2.6 million. So that should be put on the side. It means that there was some hasty conclusion there, which is a pure fallacy, and we should put that on hold. The second leg of it is that the cathedral secretariat gives a response and says, listen, we were at a point where we needed some money to be able to get the work to continue. And I don't speak for the cathedral. I'm only interpreting what they said to get some work to continue. And so a member of the board, he's not the secretary, he's a member of the, of the board of trustees, a member of the board of trustees, opts to advance the amount of money to the secretariat to be able to get this work done. Now, the only way we can impugn conflict of interest in this matter, or impugn any form of corruption in this matter, if, if there is evidence that upon giving the money, I benefited from 0.5% interest or 0.1% interest. Then I could say that, well, I found myself in a very opportune position to make money 
and I took advantage of it. Otherwise, it is hypocritical, it is unfair, it is wrong on anybody's part to even pretend. Honorable Okujota Blacko has been a public official before. He has been a deputy minister of education before. He cannot swear on his life that when he was deputy minister of education, he never took an official trip, comes back before getting reimbursed. It happens in our, in, our, in our public life, in our private businesses. It happens all the time. The only time I would have an issue and anybody who is not trying to do politics or propaganda should have an issue is when JNS gives you 2.6 million and then when you are paying him back, you pay him 2.7 million. Then you could say that, well, you could have made it public so that we can have some competition even in the amount of interest or percentage of interest therein. But for the facts that I gave you money at no interest, you use it for the work done, it's been re, 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 reimbursed or reversed at no interest. You cannot, under any circumstance, impugn one conflict of interest or fraud or any illegal dealings. Well, now we move to that, the next that level. That charge will establish, but it should no, be so, so, to so you. Then let me, uh, in fact, it, Afrin, no, that's Afrin, one Afrin, of the subjects of the investigation. Afrin, I, so, I just wanted to... No, hold on. The, so, the, 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 let me pick on... Yes. Lawyer Martin, I beg you. So let me, let me pick on the strategy issue. So that mm -hmm. is where the theatrics and the drama comes in. But so you know... Hold on, So you know that Shroud will investigate. You know that that hasn't been established as a fact. And yet, you heard Honorable Lawyer Martin Kwebu say that no matter... Yeah. No, no matter what Shrad does, yeah. the shame yeah. and the distraction of the person's image would have been done based on your negligence. No, do you understand what I'm saying? So you... No, not you, negligence. Oh, my, oh no, Martin, okay. I beg you, the way you're interrupting so, me, you I see, beg you. You leave it. You made this, I, I beg you. When you're speaking, I never spoke. Then it's, Note your point. So, now, it is your negligence. There's a reference that you made. And I think that because you are making specific responses to a statement that was made, not only out there, but no, Martin, on this I beg you, platform, don't, 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 don't GNS, per the documents that were made available to Parliament, and, and you know what, Dafia Mepo is here, so, was first described as a contractor. Hmm. By who? By, this is by the Secretariat. So, wait, wait described first as a contractor all, by who? Where? And, where was he described and, as? I no, want to see the documents. I think you make reference to, okay. to that. This is, you don't have the, the document. Hmm. I'll show That's it to why you. That's why I'll be waiting for that. Then, that was the documents presented to Parliament. So, first off, per the knowledge of the said company, in the eyes of a document presented to you Parliament, you this the is GNS as a contractor. Where? That's number Where? one. The second one is that before okay. the day that 2.6 million CDs refund was made, some 3.5 million CDs had been paid into GNS account by the Controller and Accountants General Department. Mm. After now, we don't know exactly what work DNS did. Perfect. That so my, the my said money was paid, perfect. out of which the 2.6 2. million Afrin. was given to perfect. the Secretary. That is why, this, what you have said is exactly why this morning I said I am sad. And you know, the funny thing is that these, these same people who do these things to fellow citizens who claim I am a Christian. No Christian. No Christian would do such thing against a fellow citizen without establishing all the facts. And I am still picking on Honorable Martin's point that says that no matter what the investigation will come up with, the damage and the shame that you have brought to a person who may or may not be innocent is irreparable. That is where my point is. So listen, I, this is a, a business, a company, GNS. You have not established the kind of work they did for whichever institution that brought the 3.5 million. You haven't established that yet. Whatever you say, it is at best speculative. So you have not established that but yet. it should be of concern No, no, no. You, yes, exactly but until you establish it, you don't call the person fraud. Alfred, unless you want to do politics, anybody watching me this morning and listening with a very fair heart and as, an, as, a, as, a, as a very uh, a worried citizen who understand that, you have seen a bank statement. You don't know the interpretation of the bank statement. And you impugn fraud. You impugn self-dealing. You impugn corruption. You impugn uh, a conflict of interest. So the assumption with what you are saying and what Honorable Kudyoto through his theatrics has propagated in the past week is as if government gave some money to GNS and GNS gave the money to, to the National Cathedral 
without any work having been done by GNS whatsoever for the government of Ghana. That has not been established. My point this morning is you call yourself a Christian. You haven't established these things. If after the investigations and everything it shows that there's a legitimate business that TNS and or GNS end is 3.5 million and that out of which you feel that well I have done some work I've received some 3.5 million you need money let me advance you and you pay me later how are you going to repair the image of this person number two and I'll come to the I'll come to the issue the, the other issue so in your in your dealings and your oversight responsibility after it has come to the fore that you hastened in trying to make it look like GNS has done anything because the evidence shows that they did not receive any legal money. Then he said, let me go and find who is behind GNS. So you found out that there's a certain Edu Genfi who is behind GNS. And then your further uh, 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 checks showed that this Edu Genfi happened to be the same Reverend Minister called Reverend Kusi Boateng. And then quickly, you come again to social media. And this time, you are calling him multi-identity you are calling him names. You have given him all manner of things, all sort of descriptions. I don't want to read. And you call you 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 impugn conspiracy. He says he appears to be benefiting from a grand, well orchestrated conspiracy. This is all theatrics. It's sad, hypocritical, and he should not be calling himself a Christian because these things you have not established. For which reason you have written a petition to try to investigate before you call this man all these names? For Christ's sake. What a Christian should do to a fellow Christian is to wait and for, for the facts to be established before you go into it. Now, like I said, I do not speak to Reverend Kusibotin, but I am worried that a member of parliament went back on this very dangerous uh, 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 activity. Investigate, research, find your evidence, go to Shraj, let Shraj do the investigation. Let Shraj establish that indeed, JNS had benefited illegally. Let's try to investigate and confirm that indeed there's um, um, a, a fact of multiple identity. Then you can come out and call names. Alfred, as I sit here, and again, I want to separate the issues. We shouldn't, uh, you know, confuse it. I do not speak for Reverend Kusi Boate, but I'm a worried citizen. Listen, a lot of our mothers and grandmothers have multiple names. That is a fact. Yeah, comfort. Yeah, comfort is the same. Please let me. I mean, I, I looked at the time. La, yeah, mm -hmm. comfort is, is the same as Jennifer. You see, Edward. The same person. Or, or Jennifer. Yeah, uh, comfort. You see, Edward. It happens all the time. The, the matter is the same as Rebecca Hanson. No, so what, what are you suggesting? So the point exactly, I'm making is exactly that if you, you identify my name, Yata, here, and you identify my name, Comfort Ampon, here. Until you establish that they are two different people, you cannot come to the public and say that I have claimed I have two mothers. It is hypocritical. It's a very sad situation. Because Young Comfort and Jennifer Ampon could be the same persons. And I am not wrong because even the laws of the land claim, I accept that I can have two names. You see what is happening here? There are two Let me lawyers take it in one, studio. Let me so so if you're talking about what the law of the please, 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 please. Hey, hey. I, I can exactly, read English. Exactly. I can which read part of English. The law. There's a Supreme no, no, Court just, ruling. No, no, no. There's which part of the law. There is a Supreme Court ruling that there's a, a Supreme the Court ruling which is public. All of us have it. Which Supreme which, Court ruling? Oh, the one the Kwame Sapo and the Jantu also. Mm. There's a Supreme Court ruling mm -hmm. which establishes that because of our social cultural environment or context, we are allowed to have two names. And Alfred. This is you no. See, oh, could you let me? Let me well, well, and then we'll rebut well, well, on. Yes, yes. It's subject to you are talking about the for criminal purposes. It says if only you are doing. Have you established criminalities? You are allowed to uh, allege. But have you established no, criminalities? It's allowed to allege. So, so you disagree with me? Let me make my point. I beg you. I don't want to have a banter yes. with you. So, so let me flow. The Coffee Sapon versus Franklin. Mm. Uh, Dubobi Jantua case is what you are making reference to. Can I go? So you know the case now. Can so, I proceed? So in fact, that particular case. If you read the case brief, mm -hmm. the conclusion, in fact, of the Supreme Court on this, which I'm sure that you have seen, since you said you have that particular case documents, which I believe, I hope you do have, it says that thus, it says goes on, I mean, back home, he is commonly known and called by his native name, given at birth. Mm -hmm. 
it will not surprise anybody if such persons acquired property in the native name. Mm -hmm. It is an age-old practice. But with the introduction and widespread use of technology, where the name of a person captured in computerized database cannot be easily changed, the customary practice must give way to modern practice of keeping one name at birth as obtained in the development and of various systems and in the developed world as well. So in as much as you make reference to this, the conclusion of the Supreme Court ruling on this matter is that as times change <laughs> and we have improved and modern practices really of keeping hard. one name, we should the be ruling able to move forward. We should be able to modernize awesome. systems. We should be able to awesome. So the rule is simple. And everybody watching me, and me, I like to speak to but those you. But you have the, the Oh, I've read, but you've, at least you've read it. We've all read it. The okay. point is that, and stop interrupting me. The, the, no, inter no, interrupting it is, me. It is, no, the I, point I, is I, that. Let me just establish The this. point is then that. Oh. It is my discretion to ask questions when you talk, and that's why I'm hosting the program. But, but let me make okay. a point that you interrupt, that, I beg you. It's, it's fair. It's, so you can't fair. Otherwise, you distort my. The point is that your comfort or your attire can be the same as comfort. That is fact. And our parents, not only do they have multiple names, some of them even have multiple dates of birth. Some of them even have multiple dates of And you see, once you begin to speak these things and you confuse everybody, you pretend as if everybody in the country doesn't understand the context within which we live. Just warning, almost everybody watching me on TV3 now has one or two people in their homes that have multiple names. And these names appear on their cards. Somebody registered for the voter ID card with attire, and registered with a Ghana card with Comfort Siedwa. If I am going to make any registration and this person happens to be my mother, depend on which ID card I have, that is the name I will quote. So the point I'm making with all of this is that these are all questions that remain unanswered. For which reason? Until you establish as a matter of fact that the, the two names that you saw on two different forms, two different occasions, Belonging to Reverend Kusi Boateng with a name Ata Agnes or so. Is it? I, 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 I think Ata, Ata, no, Agnes. Ata Agnes. And the other one is Yajemfua. Yes. It is a classic example of a possibility of any Ghanaian mother in this country having those two names. The person's full name could easily be Agnes Ata Jamfua or Agnes Ya Ata Jamfua. It is so easy. It is common in our society. It is all over the place. We even have people who are in leadership. Was it not William Adodanko uh, Ekufuad? Uh, uh, but I'm sure even at some point, Kweku was part of it. Sometimes you find me, my name, on official records, Dennis Edward Kweku Abwaji. Sometimes you find Dennis Edward Abwaji. You can find Kweku Abwaji. Whatever it is, the law says that until you establish that I am doing this for criminal intent or with criminal intent, you cannot come out and call me out. And the painful thing for me this morning in all of this is that you are trying to give the dog a bad name to hang it. You do not like the National Cathedral. You don't want the National Cathedral to be built or you don't want it to build under certain circumstance. Go after the National Cathedral. Attack it as much as possible. You are in Parliament. You succeeded in blocking some allocation for the construction of the National Cathedral. That is your job. If you identify anything against a citizen in this country, the laws of the land does not allow you to call the person's name and, and, and conclude and give the person corrupt tags until the facts have been established. We run a principle of presumption of innocence in this country. And you see, when it's not affecting you, you defend it. When you are not the victim in this case, when the person who is being attacked in this manner is not your uncle, it's not your brother, it's not your, your, your friend, you will come and sit here and justify what Honorable Oblakwa is doing. But I am saying that Honorable Kusi Boateng could turn out to be guilty or not guilty in this matter. And for which reason, he has been destroyed without repairs. What it is Honorable Okujoto Ablakwa has done to him. Because if you look at the facts that Honorable Okujoto Ablakwa has put out, there is nothing in there that shows a definite crime in there. He has nine passports. All the nine passports he has ever acquired have the same name and the same date of birth. All well, the nine. There is not a single police order. There's not you, a single... While you round up. He's had nine passports. passports. All the nine passports have the same name without any of them having a different name and date of birth. What it means is that there are a lot of things that you haven't established. So why do you go out to call the man corrupt, impugn conflict of interest, 
South Dillon and a Grandford. He should stop this. He called the NDC MP some time ago. He called them uh, corrupt. Okay. He said they are taking so, bribes. So, so, the NDC well, you, MPs, you, you, Honorable you Mutaka came out. Please, let why, me, why is it uncomfortable? No, I've seen Honorable Mutaka. Let me land. When he was reading the 18 list, when he was reading the 18 list, yes, when he was reading the 18 months, no, 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 listen, what? What about my life? When he was reading the 18 months, he allowed you. You didn't. I have watched so it. I, Opesa, I would know. not in any way. Opesa, it is obvious that it is obvious. position that you're trying to put it out there that, <laughs> that you do not ah. have enough Orab time. Orab 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 16 minutes. No, to to talk. To know, yeah. no, no, no. Why are you were doing late. 18 maximum? And we have a of conversation. I don't mind. There's a lie. Yours is two questions. Can you imagine? So that's why I give you the time. Thank you. Give me that second. Lawyer. Lawyer. Don't give me the time. So, so, yes. Uh, let me no, 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 um, no, I'll let, come back. Uh, 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 okay, yeah. Uh, yeah uh, yes, on, yes. On this <laughs> because some of the document that I made reference to oh, is available to Parliament as yes, well. Uh, when the Secretariat appeared before you. Yes. Let me start by saying um, don't let it be communicated that the NDC is against the construction of a national cathedral. I don't think anybody else. Or anybody. That is not the issue. The issue is that Parliament is interested in the use of public funds for a project that initially began as a private project, as metamorphosed into a public project, mm -hmm. for which in excess of 339 million Ghana cities has been expended so far, and we have very little to show. These are the issues. It's not about Christianity, it's not about I mean, spirituality, it's not about being religious. No. So, where men of God, strictly speaking, are in charge of a project, and the project is running into financial difficulties with evidence of dissipation of public funds we have right under law as citizens to interrogate it whether you're a parliamentarian or not so i want dennis to to cool down a bit and let's look at the issues let's take the issues methodically there was a motion of censure against the finance minister now in his defense, issues of funding towards the National Cathedral came up. It had come up much earlier, but we, nobody ever got the opportunity to really deal with the matters. So when the allegations were made, in his response, he brought a detailed 98 paragraph response. As part of an addendum to that uh, document, he brought another document detailing <coughs> Payment towards the National Cathedral project, which began as a hundred million project in 2018, and now to a 400 million dollar equivalent project. Mm -hmm. And he says that the, the, so far, the state has expended in excess of 58 million dollars to it in city equivalent. So he brought a breakdown. In that breakdown you see the actual expenditure on the construction comes to about 13.97 million out of the 58 million expended. For instance, we've expended... This is 58 million dollars. Yes, equivalent. That's so he gave the equivalent in 339. 339 million CDs. Yes. Now, so people became apprehensive after he gave that figure. So during the budgetary hearings, we, we demanded a detailed document. In fact, further documents were demanded, but it delayed. But it came during the budgetary hearings. And this was the document that the National Cathedral itself, the, the Secretary, produced. In the document that they produced and sent to Parliament, they gave a total expenditure of $225 million 962,500 Ghana cities, which is a, a far departure from the 339 million that the finance minister indicated. Mm 
that he had actually given towards the National Cathedral Project and gave actual breakdowns. Mm -hmm. He gave breakdowns. So the question arose as to the missing link, which comes to about 114 million. Okay. okay. <clears throat> now, we left that matter and decided to interrogate the actual expenditure National Cathedral is about. Under that expenditure, if you go to um, resource mobilize, that is um, construction, contractors mobilization. Mm -hmm. It's contained on page two of the document submitted. And that, and that, and that contractors mobilization, you have, have Rebadi Limited, advanced payment, 7 to 1.4 million Ghana cities. Again, Rebadi Limited, issuance of LOA, 58.38 million Ghana cities. Then we have final negotiations with general contractors, 11.76 million. Then we have part payment to Rebadi Limited, 25 million Ghana cities. Then we have a GNS Talent Center Limited, 2.6 million. So this is the this is the source of the further inquiry the Honorable Kujetu and the minority launched. So we ticked, we ticked the boxes. But when you get to GNS Talent, the name sounds queer. <laughs> so what did we do? We went to the Registrar General to look into the records of the company. Then we discovered that it is, it is incorporated as a talent and skills training company that offers talent and skills training, like a consultancy sort of hmm. training in manpower skills, whatever. It was nothing like a construction firm. So our antenna went up further. Then we began to dig. Movie script. Yes. No, it's not our movie. We are taking the matters methodically. No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So when we dug deeper, then we discovered that indeed controller and accountant general had made some payment. Okay. Then evidence also meant that the National Cathedral Secretary had actually written for some loan from this company. Don't interrupt you. All right. Now, the purpose for which GNS was established had nothing to do with being a savings and loans company. So again, that is also in breach of law. At what point was it established as a savings and loans company, or was it referred to as a savings and loans company? No, because to be able to give loan to another company, as a company, it ought to be your purpose. You cannot be incorporated as a company in schools training and you'll be advancing money. That's unlawful. You are engaged in an unlawful activity. That you, is the the advancing of the 2.6 million yes, upon the request of yes. the that's the secretariat. Yes. The National that's National a loan. Secretariat. <laughs> you give a loan. It may be interest free, but it's a loan. It's not every loan that comes with an interest. Yeah. They are interest free loans. Mm. Imagine that the secretariat hadn't paid. How are you going to tackle them? You're going to sue. You're going to sue the secretariat and demand your money. How, what were you going to say? You were going to say that you had advanced money to them. Would that be in tandem with the purpose for which you were incorporated? No. And again, the decision by the Secretariat Board to even borrow money from this GNS has been established to be in breach of Section 76 of the PFM Act 2016 Act 921. What does that provision say? The provision says that every public entity that, that, that desires to take a financial or seek financial assistance or loan Ought, ought first of all to seek approval from the fine from the minister which is the finance minister has it been established that this request did <laughs> not go through the finance ministry has the 2.6 million has, has the evidence been given so you don't i have stated the law so you don't call him corrupt until you
somebody said, I have a court of law. He's allowed to. When you are going to court, eh, the charge sheet, they say stealing, okay. contrary to the law. When is that? That's why you are talking to the one talking to Why are you messing with him? He's talking to messing with him. But he's talking to messing with him. He's the one talking to him. He's the one talking to him. The alliance is strong. He's the one talking to messing with him. So they have been very quiet. He's the one talking. I'm messing with you. Because strong alliance. No, it's not about alliance. But why are you messing with him? So, yes. you, 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 so, so, so I have stated the law. They have responded to other matters. Have they stated that they sought clearance from the finance minister to take these two point six million Ghana cities as a loan for purposes of advancing to contractors, contractors mobilization. You see. This is, this is where the deceit of parliament comes in. Where you claim that you've, you've given mobilization to contractors, mm -hmm. and in the letter asking for the money from this company, you said you didn't have money, you were expecting some money. So you needed the money urgently to do so, and that you refund it within two weeks or three weeks. Don't tell parliament that you have given money to this company as mobilization. This is, this is an in-house transaction. Parliament doesn't want to know. What you should be telling Parliament is that contractors, you have actually given public money to state them. But don't state GNS as a contractor that you have given money to. This is their undoing. This is their undoing. This, this was the denouement. This is what exposed them. So, we are raising issues of corruption because of these breaches. And let me again make the point that Dennis went to town about. Now we have a system of registering our citizens. It is biometric. Look, your fingerprints won't change. You can have three house names, 15 house names, but your fingerprints won't change. And the fact that you have 15 house names. Me, I have, they call me a footy in the house. My, my sister's children and brother's children, they call me off a chair. Some of my friends, they call me chair. That's a twin. You know, I have a long name. Indeed. But my, my fingerprints, when I go for biometric registration, my fingerprints have remained my fingerprints since I was, I was born. So to say that you have a different date of birth today and tomorrow and another different birth to justify, our people are very intelligent. So where an error has been made, let's admit that an error has been made. Then the justification is what people are angry about. No, we're angry at the name calling until the facts are established. That's what we're angry Look, at. Look, it has been established that the man By who? has acquired two things. By who? By who? Two team numbers. He's By giving who? the two separate team numbers. By who could you talk about? And now, ever since the introduction of team, that is the tax identification of acquisition of them, it's always been biometric. So when you give your details and it goes into the system, you have to change your details to be able to acquire another. You understand? If you if you if you apply for for the acquisition of tin and you provide the same set of information, the data will pop up. That well, if what Okuja Top Black House would have anything good, it, it is not the same set of exactly data. exactly my the, point. The GRA so, is yet to, to yes. no, but come out on this you matter. See, you see, Sami Okuja Top and the minority have put out their their data, their evidence mm -hmm. that in order to acquire a different thing in this country you 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 have you have to intentionally provide different sets of information information that will not correspond exactly with what you have earlier provided that is the only way you can bypass it so to be able to do that it means you did it willfully you did it with an intent to to evade the system to be able to acquire another one in any case why would anybody acquire two tax identification numbers it's curious. It's very curious because it comes with the payment of tax. Again, people, people, every reasonable being is reluctant to pay tax. 
to even the acquisition of the tax, the, the tax administration of my government is encouraging people to do that. People are reluctant. Mm -hmm. So to go and acquire a second one, you should be asking why. But that why will be answered later. So, what can I say? Mm -hmm. Let the argument be made that this government should be firing this Reverend Minister <laughs> now. According to Pending the determination of this matter. It should be fired. The, 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 the preponderance of the preliminary evidence that have popped up, the material evidence that have popped up, is sufficient basis to ask the man to stay at home. Because, you see, he's a public servant. He's serving on a public body. He's a trustee. And, you know, there are serious, serious consequences when a trustee dissipates the the process of the trust fund you want him to step aside while investigations are ongoing if you won't, if you won't do so willingly he ought to be fired there are so many public servants who are sitting at home for 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 a miniature of this a miniature of this they are sitting at home yesterday we considered an auditor general's report where somebody it's at home because of an infraction. It's on half salary. The matter has daily dally. We've directed that they should conclude the matter so that his fate will be determined. Mm -hmm. On Tuesday, we considered a report on the National Sports Council where some staff are at home for some infraction, which, which determination has not been concluded. They are sitting at home. They are public servants. Why shouldn't the same standard be applied to every public servant where grievous allegations have been made against you? So, I can say, the National Cathedral, we will interrogate it. We will demand accountability to the health. Every single government money, state money that is going there, will demand that it be put to the purpose for which it has been expended none other so so whether you are whether you are a pope or an altar boy we will demand that accountability from you if you are put in charge of some function or activity or you are in charge of some role at the national <coughs> National Cathedral Secretary. So how do you respond to the miracles position that before you make conclusive statements and descriptions would have allowed the Shraj investigations to have concluded so that on the basis of that you would make these descriptions of corruption and then also the name calling that he is making reference to in the said pronouncement or documentation by someone I, I have made the point Okujoto has made the point the minority has made the point that GNS was incorporated as a skills training company the National Cathedral in responding to that allegation didn't say that GNS subsequently changed the in the purpose for which it was originally incorporated into a savings and loans company so they were capable in law to advance the money they didn't do that Two, they also didn't establish that GNS actually undertook any construction work at the National Cathedral Secretariat for which they, they advanced 2.6 mobilization as stated in this document too. This document as, pro presented to you? In Parliament. In Parliament. They say that they have given GNS 2.6 million. Is, is so, the money 2.6 million or 3.5 million? Because is, is I'm looking at the, 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 the accounts <laughs> that yes. the documents that yeah, were provided yes. by the, this said company yes. and the, the account statement yes. they have some 3.5 million payment that was made <laughs> on the 23rd of August uh, 2021 <laughs> from the Controller and Accountant General's Department. Mm. Then out of that, this was the first money in this uh, that said account. Mm. Out of that, this 2.6 million was then given to the, the secretariat. Now, now, it should be asking the National 
cathedral secretary. That under what circumstances was the controller and accountant general authorized or requested to make public payments or to make payments through the public system to a purely private entity whose who stated object and purpose for which it had been set up had nothing in relation to the National Cathedral Secretariat. And we are saying that it was it was a conduit of, of laundering the money. What, meaning what? What are you suggesting? I have just told you that there's no evidence that they did any work for which warrant for payment had been written. Look, for a controller to make payment to you, the processes are laborious. So it means some invoice, some warrant had been prepared from the National Cathedral Secretariat. You don't know. You're calling requesting for that payment, for which eventually controller processed and paid to GNS. <coughs> Do you understand my point? Because controller doesn't simply make payments to entities. It's so laborious. So the purpose for which that 3.5 3 million Ghana cities was was paid to GNS, mm -hmm. we're also looking into it. Mm -hmm. We'll let you know. The evidence mm -hmm. will come out. In fact, well, that's what I wanted to establish, that if this would be of interest to you, the members of parliament, not just a minority, uh, Ogansi, the members Ogansi, of parliament, I will, don't believe the point. Ogansi, exactly you, think that, what, you think that for all the details we are, we are bringing out, this is beyond us. In fact, that warrant of payment is it's a public document. Mm -hmm. We've mm -hmm. written... To demand for it. To written to demand yes. details of the 3.5 million. That the, the basis for which 3.5 million was paid to GNS. We've written. It's, it's been worked on. We'll okay. get the copy. And some other documents. And you see that suddenly that 3.5 million is what has brought resources into the account of GNS. Mm -hmm. For which they were capable to now say they were advancing 2.6 million to the National, uh, National Cathedral Secretariat. So... If this is not a conduit for moving public money into private hands, I doubt whatever it is. But again, we will not go into the merits. So let's track, interrogate the issues. And when the dust, when the dust settles, uh, we'll know. The, while we round up on this, I'm going to go for this quick break. Um, but, but before that, I'll just no, just really a couple of minutes on, on yeah. rounding up this, yes. both for you and then then it's miraculous. Yes, actually, because think, we need to move into the debt estate. Yes, I think moving forward, maybe we will not be timing because I see I got far less time. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> yeah. you, 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 I, I look at the time. Uh, uh, you don't finally, need to know. I get you don't lawyer need to know the freedom fight. Because <laughs> I am, I am actually. Okay. Timing you Alfred, I am happy lawyer has joined okay. me in the freedom yeah. fight. Finally. Okay, so uh, initially I thought that the, uh, I presume that we all understood conflict of interest. And so I just went on, I think we should go back to the basics. You see, well, we mentioned conflict of interest. And that's to correct the point uh, uh, this Dennis made, that he didn't benefit. There was no interest. No. Conflict has three types. Hmm? Yes. Three types. There's a real or actual then there's apparent. They always jump to something. Then there is cool. potential. Yeah. No, so three types of conflict. And if so you look at law. Article you uh, 284 of the Constitution, you know law, one, you know 284. Law. it says, just to tell you that these two I even mentioned here, it says, a public officer shall not put himself in a position where his personal interest conflicts or is likely to conflict with the performance of the functions of his office. So that's just, I'm just showing that even the constitution, you see two types mentioned there. Mm -hmm. And I even think that when they say it's likely, it, it subsumes mm -hmm. the, or it puts together the potential and the, and apparent. the apparent. So here, what we are talking about, Alfred, the, the likely side is the Caesar's wife's test. Mm -hmm. What we say, Caesar's well, wife's test. Must be above reproach. Uh -huh. Live above reproach. You see, Julius Caesar, yes. even Mark Anthony, somebody yeah. was said to have slept with Caesar's wife, even though eventually he didn't. He, he uh, came out not to. Yes. He divorced his wife. He said, no, our <coughs> wife must live above reproach. He didn't want any cloud of suspicion on his wife's head. So, in that case, 
please, once you have that cloud of suspicion, go. So here we are talking about the scissors wise test. So when you have a situation where as soon as outsiders here, and that was the point I made. So I didn't think initially I should be quoting and uh, say this means that I thought I'll be belittling uh, viewers and the rest. But now I see we should go to the basics. So, Alfred, the key point is this. To the outsider, as soon as he hears, ah, board member of National Cathedral gives National Cathedral Project a low. Quickly, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. He says that no, 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 something is going wrong, it doesn't add up. So that okay. is the apparent. So you see that it's apparent, you it, up it may not be. Yes. And then I'm okay, let me leave it and go back. Please, so please, viewers, this is sometimes you even Google on the true. net, you see various authors on conflict of interest, okay. you understand, read up. Number two, Dennis has made so much of a, a, a mountain of the point that why do you say corruption, this, 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 when it's not been proven? Unfortunately, that is the way the uh, system is. It's not in Ghana. That's how it's designed. At the, the point of presenting your petition, you have to make an allegation. So even in court, when you are going, the charge sheet will say Kwabna Menu, uh, the count one, stealing, contrary to section 124 of the Criminal uh, Offenses Act. For that, you, Kwabna Menu, also so, 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 you so, stole. Yes. It's not yet been proven. That's just a charge sheet. <laughs> <again>. <laughs> So unfortunately, so Kusi Bwati should have known of the scissors wife's test. Live above reproach. Just stay away. So unfortunately, now who calls him? He brought it up on his head. So as for potential conflict and the apparent uh, conflict, hey, that one there is clear to anybody. As soon as somebody okay. hears it, he says, uh -huh, you see the self deal, you see these are uh, big men. That's what they've done, uh, and Ghana never makes progress. That's what the ordinary Ghanaian will say. And, and you that, can never take it away from okay, him. And that will be the subject on, or the basis on which you would make this petition to the Commission of mm. Administrative Justice mm. Mm. to look into. Well, Dennis. Alfred, I've started my stop. Yes. Why you wanna so, so Alfred, you see, in all of these things, Alfred, in all I of these things, for this quick break. Yes. usually when you hear, you, like I've said, these are all self-centered political agenda. Nothing more, nothing less. And good news is that a lot of Ghanaians are watching and they are reading in between the lines. The next time, they will move from Reverend Kusibuatin to the other members of the cathedral. You just watch it, mark it anywhere. Because everything they are saying is if, 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 if. And you see, you have the lawyers trying to bring some theories and telling you about charge sheet. It's Facebook the charge sheet. Why didn't you go and write the charge sheet first before you go on Facebook to try and run me down? The charge oh, sheet. Oh, I beg you, I beg you, I beg you, I beg you. I have only four minutes. You've taken two hey, seconds. Four? Yes, the charge sheet. The charge sheet is not Facebook. There is a reason why the law says charge sheet. So you don't come on Facebook, run me down, insult me, call me names. And then when I begin to give response, you jump from one to the other. And now, let me tell you, GRE, if you go to the GRE website, Alfred, GRE says that you can have multiple TIN numbers, but merge the two TIN numbers using the Ghana card. So GRE himself or itself admits that citizens can have multiple numbers. What, this is what he says. He says, yes, so but you would. So to, I, I'm on link. the GRA site. Let me read what it myself. Says, Let me make my I have point multiple myself. tins. Let me make do my point I, Do I need to link? Oh, you are using my four minutes. Let me make my own point. Be. Let me make my own point. I beg you. Is that the so GRA says that yes, you will need to link each tin. So they admit that you can have two tins. Each tin to the Ghana card. To do this, you can take all your ten cards to a GRA office and have one of our staff help you. Now, let me show you something. When you go and open Honorable Okudyota Blackwest, so-called expose on the thing. The first thing number was secured in 2010. The second thing number was done in 2013. When did we start merging our thing numbers to the Ghana card? So how do you know? If, as we speak, in fact, I know as a matter of fact that Reverend Kusi Watson doesn't have multiple things because so far, at least in the last two, three years, every Ghanaian had been advised and we've started the process of linking our TIN numbers to our Ghana card and linking our Ghana card to our Senate numbers. So you see, you have gone out there, put some outdated old school TIN application forms, one in 2010, one in 2013. All of this predates the current arrangement of having the Ghana card as a TIN number. And yet... You go out there and call me fraudulent. 
and you impugn the fact that I have two thin numbers, and so I am involved in fictitious, corrupt activities. I am telling you today, this morning, my four minutes has elapsed, that as we speak, Reverend Kusi Boateng doesn't have two thin numbers. The forms that Oblako Kujoto showed online are two forms. One was completed in 2010. The data on the forms, so they think we don't read. All of us don't read. So they put it there, they make that part blur, and they think that it will pass. The second one was issued in 2013. We started linking our 10 numbers, which Ghana Revenue Authority admits that we can have multiple. We started linking them barely a year or two ago. So why didn't you bring his current 10 number? All of us sitting here, my 10 number is no longer what you have on that form. My 10 number is my Ghana card. Your 10 number is your Ghana card. So you cannot have multiple 10 numbers. The final point I want to make is that when I was going to get my 10 number from GRE, before the measure to Ghana card, they didn't take any biometric. So it is completely false for anybody to try and make that argument. They did and not then, take any, no, they did no, not take your biometric. You don't, you don't, you didn't, they didn't take biometric at the Ghana Revenue Authority. The only biometric connection now with the 10 is when you do the measure with your, with your Ghana card. I have 10 seconds. Now finally, Reverend Kusi Boateng doesn't have multiple names or multiple passports. He has nine passports. All of them have the same name, the same date of birth for the so, record. Why do we I'll do this to our section 275 of the tax code as exactly. amended? Why do we do this to this Wait. Ourselves? The Revenue Administration Act 2016, Act 915, because you make references to some statements. I pulled up this aspect of the law. Thank you. Possession of multiple tin. He and doesn't have multiple tin. He doesn't I'm, have multiple tin. I'm, 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 I'm making you brought a 2010, 2013 form. To a statement you made. You quoted something on the GRA website, and I think that for the benefit of our viewers, because of information and education, but he we doesn't have to multiple put it out. He doesn't. No. So stop what you're doing. No, I'm not making specific reference to this. It's about the multiple tin numbers that you're talking about yes, and what the law says. Yes, 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 yes. Section 275 of the tax code, as amended, and I quote, only one tin shall be assigned to a taxpayer. Thank you. Possession of multiple tin is prohibited. Any person who will get more than one tin shall be criminally liable under Section 275 of the tax code as amended. Since you brought it up. No, since you brought it up, it's fair. The Revenue Administration Act 2016 at 915 specifically makes Since you brought it up, it's fair. We shouldn't do this. this. Possession of Alfred, multiple things. since you brought it up, let's explain this. You shouldn't do this. Hold on. Yes, but let me help of, you. Because when you present it wholesale... No, what you have said, what you have done rather, is to try to mislead. And let me help you. So let me help you. You see, oh. there is a transition. No, there is a transitional arrangement Alfred, in the law minutes? that you have yeah. quoted. Is it not a fact that this law is there? And yet, Ghana Revenue Authority is encouraging us to go and measure our numbers. So what are you trying to do? <laughs> Reverend Kusi the, 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 has two the, the, As a no, result no, no. of the questions that people were no, asking. No, no. And I'm making but the forms, this law. But I'm referring to the forms, the so-called evidence that Okujito brought, that these evidence are outdated. And so Reverend Kusi does not have two things. What I'm making reference He doesn't have two oh, things. It's not in specific reference. Then, then it's not related. Why are you quoting it? It's not related. Why are you quoting it? First of all, I am, I am challenging the GRE that they have no such power to put out information that a person can acquire multiple <laughs> tax identification. They did not say that. Why have they said that? They you didn't you say that. said you just went to the No, I am saying and that. Oh, no, no, you see. Dennis, I have been quiet. You no, but when you do that, it's not fair to no. the people. You see, GRE no. hasn't said that. GRE are saying but that. You no, said no. on the same. Oh, I, haven't, I haven't, I haven't said that. Website. I have not what said that. Say? Yeah, I have not said law. that. Eh, no, and, and I haven't said that. He went to their website. But I'm sitting there and I haven't said that. Is that what I said? Is that what I said? No, so let me tell you what I said. I said that when you go to the GRE website, they acknowledge that. Listen, the English. I said they acknowledge that you could have two ten numbers. And that is why they have said that you should go and match. They are but English. Acknowledging doesn't okay. mean that. So I said acknowledge that you could wrong. have. You yes, could have. But it doesn't mean that it is not wrong. And so there is, it doesn't that mean is that why there is a transitional wrong. arrangement I, to match. But what you're saying is not what I said. Can I have my phone? I think that the Ghanaian people heard you. That I am challenging the GRE that they have no authority to even encourage people that once you have two team numbers or two teams, you should, you should merge them. Why not? There's nothing like two things. 
because the thing is a unique. That's that's what the law said. That's the language. You the are, yeah, this is a this is hey, the make yeah. It's a unique, so what? It's a unique right. the law when it's a identification number. That is <laughs> so assigned to an individual. A lot of Ghanaians are watching. Cannot, so. They have uh, matched their two things. The law. What are you saying? The law forbids you this from acquiring two things. That is what. But the you law could is. have. That the word is good. But you could have. Then you have engaged criminal. Can you imagine? All right. Can you? Imagine. I am saying, why did you tell the GRE when they were in the house? Listen, can you imagine? Stealing is forbidden, mm -hmm. but you could steal. Doesn't it mean it's no, regular. No, oh, until now, thank you, very you much. could have two multiple we'll numbers and then you could after merge. This quick break. Stay with me. This is Key Point. We're live on 3FM 92.7. And for the benefit of the viewers, you can also check the section 275 of the Revenue Administration Act 2016. 915 still does the